<sighs> All right, I don't even know how to start this. Um, <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <sighs> Yo, what is up, guys? Here is the interview. You guys have been all waiting for it for a few days now. I've teased it and uh, I'm interviewing my ex-girlfriend We about three years ago. Um, we dated for a little bit and uh, I'm asking her all the questions that you guys have asked me to ask her about what goes on in the mind of the person who dates someone who stutters when they stutter and stuff like that. So yeah, this is Tiana. Hello. <laughs> and um, let's get this going. So Tiana. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> when was the first time you know you noticed that I had a stutter? Honestly, I didn't notice until because we met in a public speaking class, your first speech was on stuttering. And when you mentioned, I have a stutter, then it like, because you mentioned it, that's how it became more noticeable in that sense. Like I didn't notice at all before. Yeah. So it was once you like put a spotlight on, oh, I have a stutter, then the odd time you did, then I'm like, oh, okay, I get that. But you, yeah, that was only like the littlest times, but. It never was transparent to me. Yeah, yeah, and I forgot to tell you guys, this was a time in my life where I was saying that I overcame my stutter. Like, I actually made this, my first speech was like how I overcame my stutter, mm -hmm. and, uh, or how I was working with my stutter. So this was a time where I was in the transition. I was working on my stutter for at least like six to eight months, and then I hit, pub I hit, pub I hit public speaking class, and I just made a speech about it. And at that time, my speech was good, but during the time that we were dating, it definitely had some ups and downs for sure. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to dive into now, which is, <laughs> I'm going to dive straight into the gold here. For sure. All right. So like I said, before we even started re recording is as truthful as possible. So when we were dating mm -hmm. and you wanted to start to introduce me to your family, yeah. what types of thoughts were going in your brain? Oh gosh, <laughs> uh, it's a little different for me because my family's super traditional and my background's Italian, so there's different sort of expectations on people. So, um, <laughs> oh gosh, yes. I'm even trying to think of like, uh, I was nervous, of course, because I want to make a good impression. I was confident because you had a, a, a confidence to you that made it easy for um, you to talk to people, which I really liked. And um, I was just more nervous of kind of like what they would think of you if it like, cause judgment is such a big thing. People judge so easily and yeah. my family can judge very easily. Um, Want to make sure kind of like the standard or the, yeah, is at a high level and I'm not settling sort of thing. So I was just worried about that aspect. Um, of just what they would think. But I don't know, you, you had a confidence to you and like, because I liked you so much too, I was, you know, love kind of blinds everything. And you're like, oh yeah, it's, everything's gonna be perfect. It's fine, <laughs> everything's fine. Um, so yeah, would you say that, like, are you, are you trying to say like the confidence kind of outweighed the, the actual speech impediment at that point? Oh yeah, I don't think the stutter ever was a problem for me ever it was literally like a background to me like yeah. it was something that you were dealing with so it was something that i would try to help with if i could but it was never something that i was worried about people judging you for like i maybe the odd case if because i know sometimes if you got nervous you would stutter more um and just like disclaiming that i would but for me personally it was never an issue i was just yeah there's sometimes a little stutter when you speak. No biggie. No totally biggie. chill. Yeah. All right, sweet. So what type, because I think I had dinner with your family maybe one time. I think it, so. It, it wasn't that common. And yeah. What, uh, what was kind of going through your brain if I were 
if I did get caught in a block or if I, I, I don't remember if I, I did, but. I, maybe the odd time you did, but if you did, like, I would just, I would just be there, like, in a way to, like, encourage, I would kind of just, like, smile, just, like, kind of, um, I, I could notice that you were having that point of just a little bit of nervousness, maybe, that I would just kind of be like, like, oh, you like, you got this sort of thing in my head, but, it, yeah, it was, if you ever did get caught in it, I was just, like, kind of thinking, like, yeah, you got this, like, just keep going, just, just keep talking, you're, you're good. Yeah. All right, all right. So we got the family out, out, <laughs> out of the way here. Yeah. Let's go even deeper. Oh, and there's more. <laughs> and uh, you have a lot of friends. Mm. You have a lot of friends. Yeah, here and there. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a lot of friends, guys. <laughs> She's like the most friendly person in the world. Aw, thanks. <laughs> and uh, so like at bars, mm -hmm. I'm terrible. Like I was absolutely mm -hmm. terrible mm -hmm. with my speech. Bars and mm -hmm. loud restaurants. Yeah, I, I, I remember being, if it, if it was loud, it's hard to talk over the music. That was a big thing. Yeah, yeah. So let's actually go to a different scenario I know you will remember. And it was at your Christmas party. Mm. Christmas party. For, oh. For the, for the bet. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. You came with me. Yeah. 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 I remember that. Yep. So at that time. I also couldn't get my words out, like whatsoever. You were more uh, introverted, quiet. Yeah. I remember. I, I was in such a state where I knew I was going to stutter. And the few times I did try to talk, I would stutter so much. I remember you were beating yourself up about it. Yeah. I think because we would, the odd time we would step outside or like just get fresh air or a smoke or something, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I remember you were more quiet and then you, I could tell that you were like internally battling it a lot because you weren't yourself in that sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember one time that that night I went out by myself and I like went and took a shot. Like oh, I, yeah. I, I went and bought some alcohol and I was like, fuck this. I remember that, yep. But what was, what was going through your brain when I was struggling? Mm. I felt a little helpless because I knew that you were internal, internalizing it and uh, it sucks because when you care about someone so much, you just want them to, you know, especially when you're dating someone, uh, of course you see everything great about them, but they only see their flaws. Like you see the flaws in yourself, but when you're dating them, of course you see all of the good things and even their struggles, you're like, I want to help them with it and I want to be there to support it or, you know, whatever I can do to help. So when you were doing that or beating yourself up, it's hard because it's like, no, like, you're doing good. Like, don't worry about it. Like you're, you're getting in the way of yourself essentially. Yeah. And, and that's the hardest part to see is that, um, the struggle that you're going through, but you can't help. And that's where the helplessness kind of comes in. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of like, I wish I could give you like this big inspirational talk, be like, you're good, you're fine. But essentially you can only get yourself out of your own rut. Yeah. And all I can do is just be there for you to know that you're not alone in it. And because I, I personally will never understand, which sucks, but um, that's where you can make the change for your own mindset. And that's where I was just, no, you got this. Like, keep going, like talking, like don't introvert yourself, like keep putting yourself out there and keep going and you'll, you'll push through it essentially sort of thing. So yeah, yeah. And that's dope. That's dope what you just said. <laughs> oh, okay, good. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. Like when you stutter, it's just a sign that you're repressing. Like mm -hmm. if you're you're stuttering because you're repressing emotion, you're hold, you're holding intention. So the fact that like, no, you just need to keep on going is kind of like a contradiction because the fact that you are stuttering means you are repressing right now. Mm. If that makes any sense, but I'm I'm saying there there is a way out, and yeah. it's by keep on going. Yeah. But you have to battle through that. Yep. All right. Some more <laughs> darker questions give it to me i'm ready <laughs> was there uh any any situations that you avoided bringing me into because of my stutter because of your stutter i don't think that was ever a thing i th i think the only thing is i because i understood it 
Um, it's different because a lot of people sometimes don't understand it that maybe I would disclaim it to friends or family before you came just to let them know like hey sometimes he does have a stutter so like they wouldn't um, put kind of a like why are you talking that way or anything because it's not uh, quote unquote normalized maybe that's not, like lack of a better term mm -hmm. it's not as mainstream or yeah normal that's a bad word to say it's not normal but it, <laughs> like it's it's not um what's the word not i feel like i know what you're trying to say yeah it, but it, we'll blame it on the cold i'm blaming the cold <laughs> it's just numbing our brains a little bit but yeah it's, it's just not as you're, you're not hearing it as often sort of thing so that would be the only thing i would disclaim but it was never something that i'm gonna avoid him bringing because of that because then i don't know that that's kind of like if you're quote unquote ashamed of bringing your significant other because of that thing then you can't you shouldn't be dating them if you can't accept that feature of them sort of thing and it, it wasn't something that ever got in the way of that or would ever be a problem for me it was just more the disclaiming because other people wouldn't understand essentially some people judge too quick sometimes 100 percent, and that's actually something that i've been learning as well like mm -hmm. this kind of off off top off topic but it's fine mm -hmm. it's like i not with you but with a lot of people mm -hmm. i was loving them for what they could be loving them for a version that i had in my head mm -hmm. idea an idea of what they could be and we're working together to make them that person mm -hmm. and i only love that version of them so when they were mm -hmm. when they would do i don't know mushrooms mm -hmm. or when they would like do breath work or when they would meditate i would love that part of them yeah but that ultimately is bringing shame to who they are right now and mm. that doesn't give them the foundation to actually grow because you're not loving who they are right now mm -hmm. and that will only build resentment and just stunt their growth if you're loving not actually who they are but a version of them which they're not yet yes and that's kind of the same thing you were just saying it's like you wouldn't if you're in a relationship and you have a stutter and you're dating someone the thought in your brain should not be like uh, like she won't like it if i stutter because if if it is that that option or if it is that um that scenario then it's not a, re a part that's going to work anyway mm -hmm. it's not a relationship that's going to work she has to love you for your stutter she has to love you for the exact person you are right now mm -hmm. and that's the only way that you will grow yeah past or to the person that you want to be, which is who you are already, just unpeeling shit. Yeah. It's unfair to, like, if I were dating you and, yeah, you had your stutter, but if you had days where you'd only stutter a couple times and I preferred those days over, let's say, days where you stumbled more, and that's, that would be um, unfair of accepting you for all you are. So it's, it's cliche, but, like, if, if you can't love me, like, for who I am, then, you know, like, the, the whole idea thing that, yeah. that's unfair to put someone in a box of something that they may not even be or they might not be with you and they might be um you might be a chapter in their life that kind of like helps you understand certain lessons with them but then afterwards you might get to that point that they essentially wanted you to be and that yeah it's just unfair to you as an individual that if i were to look at you as only on the good days i could introduce you to friends family or accept you for who you are like that's just and that's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. approve of that. So. All right. Well, we are making you sound like too much of a good guy right now. Thank or you. Good girls. Wait, you're gonna roast me? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, All right. So no. time for some deep questions again. Oh God. Um, I think we got like two more questions here. All right. So, did you ever imagine what it would be like if I didn't have a stutter? If you did, you ever imagine me and be like, "Fuck, I wonder if Chase." Like what? What would it be like? Like what would he be like? What would his character? What would his character be like? Or what this relationship would be like? Hmm. Well, I think because you were, it was a time frame that you were transitioning into like kind of uh, being more confident with out stuttering as often, but you were still beating up yourself a lot if you did have more stumbles than you hoped. Mm -hmm. Um there was points that like i wish like that could be taken away from you in the sense of so you would see that you have like a lot of this potential to be such a, 
such a great person and I'm not saying you weren't a great person, <laughs> but this potential is to be such a, uh, like the, the individual that you can be, um, but you were um, like hindering yourself. Um, there was points that I would think of that, but essentially, like I'm a big believer in like you are who you are for a reason and like those flaws and stuff that help that are there um something with like with a stutter that you have to go through every day um there's a reason for that and I'm glad that not like that you have um that to work through um and it's 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 part of you for a reason so like the lessons it'll give you and even like for instance this platform that you are helping other people that feel helpless in the situation and um, feel hindered by their stutter that you're the person that now can help other people. So like there's there's purpose for things. There, it, there's a reason that you specifically have the speech impediment versus let's say myself or any of our friends or whoever that you meet. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the part of me was just more so like, so you could uh, not have that weight on you, but then the other part of me was like, no, this is for a reason. You just have to work through it. And there's a reason for this. You have to discover that reason and the purpose that lies within it and whatnot. 100%. That's, yeah. That's, that's dope. <laughs> I think T, I think, I think Tiana's gone a bit smarter since I last saw her. Oh, just, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe drugs help. <laughs> <laughs> that's bad. And um, that's what I say all, all the time is like, you are legitimately like this is all happening for a fucking reason but if you're taking the route of continuing to hide if you're taking if you're taking the route of continuing to beat yourself up and thinking this is the way it should be and thinking that that there's no way out and thinking that you're stuck like this forever and thinking there's there's nothing you can fucking do about it mm -hmm. and being stuck in this kind of victim mentality without actually accepting this is what you exactly needed to go through that like mm -hmm you needed to go through that because you did go through it it's it wouldn't it couldn't have happened any other way and for you to actually go through that and like for example you were watching this right now you made it to i don't know 16 minutes into this video so right sorry. now <laughs> And that's a sign, like, you're supposed to hear what, what we're saying right now, and it's actually life-changing shit, but you need to actually pull up your bootstraps <laughs> and take action. You, you, like, you have to take action, mm -hmm. because like Tiana said at the very beginning, it wasn't my stutter. It wasn't my stutter at all. It was, like, it, my confidence outweighed the stutter, is what I meant to say, mm -hmm. is that that's the thing that mattered to Tiana. But if I was so sulking, always just in my stutter, I would have never even talked to Tiana. Yeah. I would have, I would never join that group. I would never join that class. And um, yeah, so. Yeah, you put yourself out there to even join a public speaking class, which is big. And because for instance, I'm a type of person that always is, is pretty confident in public speaking. I've been in acting and stuff like that. So uh, seeing that you felt the need to do that and challenge yourself by speaking in front of a whole bunch of people and then trying not to stutter as well. Like that just shows like we wouldn't have met if you didn't challenge yourself into that aspect of your life and then gain a sort of confidence and whatever lessons I hope I gave you a couple. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think that's awesome. No, yeah, there was definitely a few times. I remember we would like leave the class and you like give me some pep talks. Oh, did I? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think I'd give you like my jacket for it or something oh you, yeah you, watch my you always gotta go for the jackets the <laughs> hoodies <laughs> the cherry on the top question is tiana you don't know much about stuttering mm -hmm. but you dated someone for a little bit mm -hmm. with a stutter mm -hmm. what advice from just not not trying to outthink this but just from your core what advice would you give someone with a stutter right now with the knowledge that you know it's hard to say because I've never had to uh, try to navigate a stutter but essentially it's like you your feelings they may come and go with if a stutter kind of um, uh, what's the word if your stutter kind of brings up certain feelings, whether it's sadness or any sort of heaviness, essentially, 
um, it's ultimately you that makes the choice of like your mindset with yourself and everyone makes choices every day and it's it, there's this borderline of like need and want so if you want to change your stutter versus you need to um, it changes kind of also how you approach it, it, it it's all about your incentive with it and if it if your incentive is an external factor like I need to perfect my stutter so I can get a girlfriend slash boyfriend or um, so people can actually like look at me how I want them to look at me or anything like that you've already kind of set yourself up for failure it's kind of like a hard pill to swallow but essentially everything that you do is an internal factor it's it all comes from within yourself how you choose to go about it and if people ultimately judge you for it that's on them and that's where you have to be so strong with yourself internally and comfortable with who you are love yourself for who you are all aspects that the stutter is just another part that's like people who have tics people who um littlest things like they have to have their hair a certain way girls do that we play with our hair all the freaking time um those little things it's the same as like a stutter it's literally just another feature that you have to you that makes you uniquely who you are and it's all the the internal sort of piece that you have within yourself that should drive um how you go about life it, it's not the stutter it's not an external thing so that's my big piece i don't know if people it might take a minute to resonate or to kind of uh understand that but work within it's always within you it's never an external thing happiness is not external uh love is not external it's all within yourself and it's what you attract as well that's where the confidence came from where i got attracted to chase he was confident within himself so it attracted me because i'm confident as well so it just worked that way so it was all an internal thing so holy fuck that oh, was, mic drop <laughs> that was insane tiana uh, you should be like my part-time assistant no i'm just joking <laughs> no that that was honestly sick that was honestly sick so uh yeah i hope you guys got all your questions answered and uh came out of this video a more whole a more so in one piece one piece of it i hope pardon i hope they got one piece from it one piece from it yeah because all you need to do is grow one percent every day that's it not take a huge leap but take a small leap and mm -hmm. um yeah so go and take some action today and again if you're looking for the exact process that i went through that all my clients are going through to overcome their stutter the authentic way through authentic character development not speech techniques but developing your authentic core, then uh, make sure you look at the closest link down below in the description and book your free consultation call with me. We'll hop on a call one-on-one -on -one and see if it'd be a good fit. So do it, do it, do it, <laughs> do it. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you, Tiana. You're welcome. Thank you. Peace. <laughs>